So this video is going to be kind of a fun one. This is uh, going to be trying to make a rocket plane. I made that rocket sled and it worked good and I've been thinking ever since of trying to make a plane that would uh, fly uh, with a rocket engine on the back of it. And I initially was thinking of a traditional airplane with you know wings on the front and the back and a tail and all that. And as I thought about it, I thought that's just not going to work. So what I plan on doing is making a paper airplane and making one that flies well and then taking the dimensions of that and increasing it and using cardboard to make a large paper airplane, so to speak. Um, I think I'm gonna use a dowel rod down the center on the top here just to kind of have a center point for everything. And then it's gonna be simply, you know, waiting it out right so it flies and then putting a rocket engine on the back. And um, what I hope to do is light the engine, light the fuse, and when it gets close to the engine, toss it myself and have it go. But we'll see what happens with that. So yeah, really straightforward, I'm gonna get at it. I'm starting this project by cutting up a large box I got from Walmart and uh, I'm going to use these large pieces to make both the wings and then the horizontal stabilizers. Trying to get the best dimensions for this cardboard here. I made a couple paper airplanes haha, and uh, to see which one just held itself better when it's thrown from behind where the rocket engine would be um, and uh, be able to tolerate the speed. Of a rocket engine of course the narrow design worked much better so i'm going to use the dimensions of this paper airplane this is the conversion that i um, have used one inch of the paper airplane right here is three and five sixteenths inch on the cardboard and i then went and figured the dimensions for the rest of the paper airplane and so this is right here you can see the pencil lines this will be the wing the main wing on top which is actually the same dimensions as this one well, I'm just holding this in place, not very well, because there's that dowel down the middle, but I'm going to have to fasten it somewhat like this, um, and uh, probably use a combination of hot glue and zip ties. I finished gluing the bottom on, and it's really holding sturdy. I was going to use zip ties, but um, we'll see about that. But I'm going to toss it, and we'll see what happens here. That was pretty bad. I'm going to try and throw this thing hard. Ah, there's a couple ways I could fix the problem by it being tail heavy. One is, of course, to add weight on the front. But instead, I think what I'm going to do is add some flanges on the side here to give it more wing. Combination of tape, glue, and popsicle sticks, I put these on. Before I launch this by hand, and while I'm testing to see how to set it up the best, I'm going to make a launcher here. This is basically a piece of wood that I covered with 38 gauge uh, aluminum foil so that it's smooth instead of sanding it i just covered it it's very slick and then if i set two of these up like this and then i'll have the ability to set this down in the center like so so i have it propped up on one end which is what i want i just put two screws on either end of those boards and then i'd like to put these every six to eight inches or so up the uh, bottom here that way a post could fit into this hold it steady on the board and then have a pointier end in the ground to uh, change the height and experiment. Now the hopes are this thing will just take off like so. I'm gonna have to fly it at some point because I have no idea how it's gonna work with uh, a rocket engine on it. I decided to paint the whole thing silver. I'm done. Okay, I got everything set up and uh, that's actually pretty darn steady holding this rocket plane in place. This is a B as in boy, 6'4", so it's not that strong. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm better off throwing it. So I covered the back of this with some aluminum uh, that I bent around and then held it in place with aluminum tape. That should take care of the problem. Different day, I've upgraded the V64 to a C65. I've added the mini camera on the front just for fun. And here we go. The aluminum worked to save the back here, so um, I think my next step is actually to go up to one higher rocket engine. So the camera got ripped right out of there, 
it was glued in there well, but it, uh, it actually tore the cardboard to end up on the ground. This is part of a PVC. I cut out a section on the bottom so that it fits around the camera. You can see how I just glued it there. It's the same as on the other side. And the camera is Velcroed in here. A D12-3 engine is now attached for the next test. Made it fine, which is great, so I know that's uh, protected well and good. Unfortunately, the larger engine caught this on fire. So I looked at this closer and checked it out. There's no nozzle left. This is a brand new D12 engine from Estes, so I don't think I've ever seen that before, and I don't know what it means. I hope this works. I put some aluminum flashing around the sides on the back here, the back end, and down there. Things that happens quite often is after the initial liftoff here, it wants to flip to its side or flip over completely. And so I want to stabilize it by adding some tail, some vertical tails here. My concern with adding a tail fin is that if this does flip over, the tail fin doesn't get demolished. So after looking at this for a bit, what I am planning on doing is putting a uh, sort of a teepee or a pyramid shaped uh, fin here, which will be aligned with the front so that the wind will go by it in such a way that it should stabilize it and it'll be attached at the top and there'll be tabs on the bottom here to glue it and this whole thing should be pretty stable i plan on putting a popsicle stick right down the center here in the back and maybe one here to support it we'll see what happens so in doing the math to try to figure out how to make this thing so that it's actually attached right here properly i decided on six inches because a popsicle stick is exactly six inches so uh, those are, the, I guess they're tongue depressors, but uh, using that and a six inch base ended up with a right angle triangle. And when you end up have a, when you end up having a right angle triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to decide how long the side should be here, which would be this side here and this side here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You keep doing the formula. Eventually you end up with 45 equals C squared, the square root of both. This turns into C, which I put a square. Okay, that shouldn't be there. That should just be C equals 6.7, which is the square root of 45. So this length will be 6.7 inches long, but it's in tenths of an inch. And my ruler doesn't have tenths of an inch. So I researched this. How do you convert this into a regular measurement you can do on a ruler? And there's a couple of construction guys that put together a video. You take just the decimal here, not the six. The six is going to be already six inches. So 0.7 and then a sixteenth of an inch is usually the smallest on the ruler. You can do this with 30 seconds too, but I don't have that kind of ruler. 0.7 times 16 for sixteenths of an inch on a ruler, and it equals 11.2. Well, bring that down, cross out the 0.2 because it's such a small amount, you end up with 11. Put it over the sixteenths of an inch and you have 11 sixteenths. The closest measurement to 0.7 inches is 11 sixteenths of an inch. So 6.7 inches equals 6 and 11 sixteenths inch, 6 and 11 sixteenths inch. It's rather large and uh, stands out quite a bit. It should act as a lifting airfoil, like a wing, because it's attached at the top here. So that hopefully will compensate for its weight. I added one more item and I cut a paper towel tubing in half and both fastened it here with these fasteners and glued it right there. This is uh, some molding sponge I put on here just in case it does flip. It's got some cushion here and there's some fiberglass rolled up in here to give it some more support. Oh yeah, and it got a paint job. All set to go, have the fuse inserted, the camera, of course, I'll put up in the front there, ready to light it. If this D12 doesn't work, I'm moving up to an E, meaning it doesn't go far enough with this D12. Well, kind of came back like a boomerang. Just took this off and the nozzle was not destroyed in here. It hung on, so that was good. However, the plane landed five feet from where it took off. And I said, if it didn't go far, I would use an E engine. Well, I'm gonna use another D because it did a lot of flips, etc. The other thing I could do here is use an elevator on the back here, like a plane has to help point the nose down rather than weighting the front. I added elevators here instead of weight to the front to help overcome that severe upward push of the front of the rocket. And uh, they're just fastened on with glue and these thumb um, fasteners right here. So what I plan on doing is uh, wrapping a wire around here and then this eyelet up front here. And of course, I'll be able to change the angle 
of the elevator here. And Using this and the sparkler wires, each flap was set at a 45 degree angle. Ready to uh, launch this with the flaps at 45 degrees, another D12 engine. The breeze has died down a little bit. It's pretty brisk though, we'll see what happens here. I think the uh, flaps definitely helped, maybe too much. I had to throw in a quick clip about this. I was driving by a place called Sun Outdoors Research and Innovation Center. Never seen it before. And they have these enormous silver airplanes, which is what I started with with this project. Both elevators are set at 30 degrees. Ready for another launch with a D12 here and uh, flaps are set at 30 degrees. Ready to go. I did put the camera in the front of this one. Ready to try another D12 right after we saw it nosedive like it did. I put the flaps at zero, even maybe plus five degrees. Take two flaps set at zero degrees. A lot of smoking but everything looks fine and I think the flaps will need to be set maybe at 5 to 10 degrees. The flaps are set at 15 degrees. I put a D12 engine on. Let's see what happens. Holy smokes. D12 do some real damage. Here it is, and you can see back close to my car is where I launched it. So it went a good couple hundred feet here, and uh, boy, it took a lot of work, but that was awesome.